This video is sponsored by Train World, America's discount model train store since 1968. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're changing up my Arduino signal system. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you are eligible for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway sponsored by Train World. Those guys were awesome enough to give me a couple prizes to give away to you guys to so thank you for your support over the past two years. And since I'm talking about Train World, please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. There's a lot of stuff going on where they are right now in the New York City area. So please keep Train World, their employees and their families in your thoughts and prayers. We're thinking about you guys. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. First of all, I'm in my workshop, which is something that you guys are not used to seeing a lot of. I got my workbench, got the staging yard, the layouts right there. I kind of like it down here. I think I'm going to start shooting more of my videos down here. But that's another topic for another day. So let's talk about what we're doing today. I've been thinking about changing up my signal system for a while, especially before the layout gets functionally complete. And the real reason for this is, yes, I did put three blocks in my Arduino multi-block signal system on there. If you're interested in that, you can check out that video right up here. But it really didn't make sense. I had no way for trains to pass each other. I, it was more of just a proof of concept. This is how it would look on the layout, and it'll add a little bit of realism. So I decided to change up my system from a block system to the signals are going to tell you which way a turnout is thrown. Now the way I have my layout designed is I do have an entrance and an exit. Right now, one side connects right here to the staging yard and the other just goes off for a future expansion. But I have turnouts right there that manage it uh, for the loop that runs around the track. And I really just wanted to put a signal system that would identify which direction has the turnout aligned for them. And I realized that I already had an Arduino program written for this for Kato Unitrack Turnout Control. And you can check that out right up here. Now we're not gonna go diving deep into writing a new program. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be implementing that program. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be using this scrap piece of tempered hardboard, and I'm going to be attaching everything using hot glue. I start off by putting some dabs of glue on a terminal strip. I then put hot glue on the back of the Arduinos that I'm going to be using. Don't worry, hot glue actually makes a great insulator. Since we're going to be using two turnouts with this setup, I went ahead and installed a second Arduino on the board. I then put an L298P motor shield on each of the Arduinos. This is what we're going to be using to control the turnouts. Lastly, I realized I was going to need some additional terminal spots, so I glued a second terminal strip to the board. I then wired up the entire terminal strip. I then proceeded to wire everything up. If you would like a detailed explanation of how to wire this up, you can check out the video where I demonstrate how to wire and program an Arduino to switch a Kato turnout. Now that the board is built, we can start to wire up all of the signals. Now we're going to be using two aspect signals rather than the three aspect signals that we were using before. And what that means is we're simply gonna have a red and a green. 
Like with all my other signals, I'm going to be using four-stranded telephone line to carry the electricity to the signals. I start off by stripping off the protective housing and I snip off the yellow wire so there will not be any confusion. I'm left with three wires like this after I strip the ends off. I then tin the edges with a little bit of solder to get ready for the connection. After that, I slide heat shrink tubing onto the wires coming from the signal. I then take the stripped out ends of the phone wire and I bend them to make hooks. This will make it easier for the wires to hold in place while I solder them. I do the same for the signal wires and place them and push them snug. I then add a dab of solder on each one of the connections. I then use my stripping tool, which has a crimping section on it, to mush the ends flat and push them together to make them thin enough for the heat shrink tubing to slip across. I then take a grill lighter and run the flame over the heat shrink tubing to lock it in place. You can burn the heat shrink tubing, so you don't want to do too much with the flames. I then take a final section of heat shrink tubing and wrap the entire section up with it. To place the signal, I drill a hole where I'm going to be putting the signal. I then run my wire through it, and let the signal just fall gently into place. I also need to wire up some buttons by connecting a positive and ground lead to them. I then cover up the connections with some heat shrink tubing to protect them when I'm installing them. I use some scraps of tempered hardboard for button mounts for now. When these buttons are permanently installed, they'll be on a fascia panel. I then attach the scraps to the board using a couple of screws. Time for the fun part, or the tough part depending on how you look at it, the installation. I pre-attached some screws so that when I took the board to the back where I was going to mount it underneath, I was able to just simply screw them in place. I then placed a few additional screws to hold my power cord. Next, it was time to do all of the connections. Again, if you want a detailed explanation of all these connections, you can check out my Arduino Kato Unitrack control video. We start off by testing to make sure that the button switches. The little LEDs mean that it's working. Now we can wire up the lights. Remember, when you're wiring up the lights, one light will need to be green while the other is red. So one section will be opposite of the red-green connections. Now we can test out our system. As you can see, it switches to the alignment and the signal switches as well. And you can see two signals right here that alternate which one is red and which one's green. So there you have it, a new simpler signal system that works really great and is a lot more prototypical for my layout and is a lot more functional too. 
Um, I'm really happy with it. I think it's gonna work a lot better, especially with the way that I'm going to operate my layout. I'm still finalizing the operating scheme, but you know I'm gonna do a video about that once I get that complete. So that's it for today, guys. If you haven't already, go and hit that subscribe button so that you're eligible for that 10,000 subscriber giveaway sponsored by Train World. And while you're at it, go and hit that like button and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Happy railroading.